So here beside me I have the Sony Endzone M9. It's a gaming monitor designed with the PS5 in mind. Now this comes with a 27 inch 4K screen, 144Hz variable refresh rate, 1 millisecond response time with G-Sync support and of course HDR. That is a lot of top of the line features, everything you could really want from a gaming monitor. But it's going to cost you because this thing in the UK will set you back £999 and in the US a slightly cheaper $899. Now I have been using this thing for the last couple of weeks and I've split my time between playing a variety of games on PS5 and just using it as a general PC monitor. And the whole point in that is to try and decipher whether this high entry price is worth all of those high end features. Now before we get into a review, if you would like to see any other Sony, PlayStation or just general gaming products reviewed or covered here on the channel, let us know down in the comments. And while you're down there, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But now that's done with, let's get into our Sony Endzone M9 review to see if this thing is worth the hassle. Straight out of the box, this thing is super easy to assemble. With the monitor and the stand slotting into one another, it does have a meaty power brick, but once you have that plugged in, boom, you've got a Sony M9 ready to bring your gaming to the next level. It sports a really sleek design with this three-prong stand that ties in quite nicely with the black and white design of the PS5. Additionally, you have this easy access height adjustment and a pretty sizable tilting range. Although the stand design does limit desk placement if you are tight for space because it takes up quite a lot of real estate. It has its own cable management slot to keep your HDMI and power cable nice and tidy and as someone that has been trying to get rid of as many cables as possible, I really appreciated this nice touch but I have to admit it was a little fiddly trying to get these in in the first place as the angle of all the different ports was just a little awkward and I reckon I would have had some trouble trying to fit more than two cables through the cable management slot. On the back of the display you have two HDMI, three USB-A, a headphone jack, an Ethernet port, a USB-C port and a display port. Despite all the wire ports, the M9 doesn't actually come with any cables so you'll have to pick up your own HDMI 2.1 cable to allow for that higher frame rate. To the right hand side behind the screen you have a power button and a directional control toggle which I found to be a little awkward at times. There's also a sort of built in LED strip on the back which you can customise the colour for but I'm going to be honest guys I did not even notice that this was there until I started sifting through the settings. It isn't all that bright unless you have the lights out. Now let's get onto that screen. If you've been playing on an HD screen or even just a cheaper 4K television you're going to notice a difference here. With that near edge to edge display, even the PS5 startup screen and dashboard are bursting off the screen. Viewing angles aren't terrible but you're definitely best looking at this thing straight on. The sound is noticeably lacking though. With a real tinny quality to it, so you're going to want to get yourself a decent set of speakers or a pair of headphones. Now Sony does have a pair of H9 in-zone headphones to go along with this device but we'll talk about them in another video. What I loved about this display is its versatility. I've been trying out a handful of games from The Last of Us Part 1 to Destiny 2. Those single player narrative experiences look incredibly cinematic although in those cases I was hoping for something a little bigger than the 27 inches that the screen was providing but that is likely a result of primarily playing on a television. Nonetheless colour accuracy was fantastic, the blacks weren't black but they were really dark and everything just looked really dynamic thanks to the 96 dimming zones across its display and the display HDR600 which allows colours to go where they need to go and be especially vivid when they get there. This basically allows an LCD screen like this to come a bit closer to the colour ranges of your QLED or OLED TVs but more on that in a bit. But just know that it looks good and it can get really bright. The faster high intensity games like Destiny or Apex Legends are where you're going to get the biggest benefits out of the M9. Reaction times are lightning fast thanks to G-Sync so the FPS genre is getting a big boost here. Destiny 2's Crucible in particular really shines because it sports the 120Hz refresh rate 
Funnily enough, from the PlayStation perspective, you're never going to get the full use of that 144Hz display since the PS5 Max is out at 120, but when you do get that bump up to 120, it makes a world of difference. This monitor clearly is FPS skewed though, as you have a few internal settings to mess around with, like the inclusion of a crosshair which has plenty of different options. Additionally, you can boost the response time even further, although I can't say that I noticed much of a difference when toggling between these, and just as a nice little bonus, you can include a frame counter. Across my review period, I also tried the M9 out as a main PC monitor display, and this was a big step up for me as someone that still uses 1080p monitors. Even just typing up Google Docs looks far sharper, and the overall PC experience outside of gaming was massively improved. In all honesty, outside of sound, there was really only one area which I was let down with, and that was in the HDR detection and source swapping. You know when you're playing a game on an HDR supported screen and you may get a second or two as the monitor or TV adjusts to HDR, well the M9 takes far longer, and I'm talking close to 10 seconds. When you're starting up a game, it might not seem like a big deal as you're just going through loading screens and logos anyway, but in the case of Destiny, which would switch to the 120Hz Crucible, I had times where the game had actually started and the screen would only then come on. It might not be a deal breaker for some, but it is weird that it's lacking so much in this field, considering that this is one of the few PS5 specific features, switching to picture and genre modes depending on what the PS5 detects. But let's discuss the elephant in the room. The price of this monitor really does impact everything about its experience. You have pretty much got every high-end spec that you could want from a monitor like this. So is £1,000 really that bad? It's going to depend on the user. If you are someone that needs frame rates but isn't bothered about things like HDR, then probably not because you can get far cheaper alternatives elsewhere. Now I play quite a wide range of cinematic and FPS games, so having the ability to be a cinematic screen and a lightning quick screen was kind of the best of both worlds. But I can't help but look at the TV that I have been using for the last year, the LG C1 48 inch OLED, which I just got up on the wall above my desk, let me know what you think of that. I picked this thing up last summer for £999, the same price as the end zone, but this thing also has 4K, HDR, 120Hz refresh rate, 1 millisecond response time thanks to G-Sync, VRR support and the added benefit of a colour dynamic OLED screen. So in this device you're pretty much getting everything you get with the end zone and a little more in a bigger screen for the same price. Granted big screens like that aren't for everyone but I can't help but feel obliged to recommend an OLED TV if you have the money. So the Sony end zone M9. It's got a beautiful screen, it's got a lot of fantastic features that make gaming an absolute delight. But the thing is, it's still incredibly difficult to recommend when you could get a bigger screen with the same specs for around the same price with that whole OLED factor added in there as well. So with that, it makes a very weird situation where if you buy this thing, you're no doubt going to be happy with it. It's not going to disappoint, but there are better ways to spend your money. So that is it for our review of the Sony Endzone M9. Let us know down in the comments whether you think that £1,000 price tag is worth all of those features. And as hinted at, you can expect coverage on the Sony H9 noise cancelling wireless headphones that come in the same line as the Endzone monitor here. You'll expect that in a video in the next week or so. But as always, thanks for watching guys. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and I will catch you right back here on Push Square. See you later.